Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India logs over 4,400 COVID-19 cases, highest single day rise since September. Seven-year-old boy's death in stampede underscores struggles of Pakistan charities. And UN says its female staffers banned from working in Afghanistan. And now for all the details, India on Wednesday recorded 4,435 COVID-19 infections, the biggest single-day jump in 163 days, taking the active case load to 23,091 as per Health Ministry data. The surge in cases were reported from states of Kerala, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh and capital New Delhi. Eleven deaths were also reported, maximum of which were reported from Maharashtra. However, the rate of hospitalization was reported to be low. Authorities across India have advised not to panic, adding that residents should observe COVID protocols and usage of masks. The centre government has also ordered nationwide mock drills on April 10 and 11 to check for COVID preparedness in hospitals. The United States has come out in support of India against China's expansionist agenda after Beijing renamed 11 places in India's Arunachal Pradesh, claiming it to be South Tibet. The White House in a statement said the US recognizes Arunachal Pradesh as an integral part of India and strongly opposes any unilateral attempts to advance territorial claims by renaming localities. India's foreign ministry also said that giving inventive names will not alter the reality. In December last year, troops from two sides had engaged in scuffles in Tawang sector of Arunachal Pradesh. The face-off came after a border standoff in eastern Ladakh in 2020, which has led to sour ties between the two Asian supergiants. The deaths of over a dozen people, including a seven-year-old boy at food distribution sites across Pakistan in recent days, have underscored the struggles of the common man amid a crunching economic and social crisis, a report. Grief-stricken Umarzada stands over his seven-year-old son Saad Umer's coffin with other mourners. Just days ago, Saad was killed in a stampede at a nearby factory where intense crowds of hungry people struggling with Pakistan's soaring food prices had gathered. Last Friday's stampede, where Saad was killed along with 10 other women and children, was by far the deadliest of several other incidents that broke out at food distribution sites across the country in recent weeks. Symptoms of a crunching economic and social crisis only exasperated by rising inflation. <laughs> More than 15 people have been killed in chaos at government-run food distribution centers, shocking Pakistanis, especially during holy month of Ramadan. The inflation crisis has also led to a dramatic drop in donations for aid as households have tightened purse strings while demand soars. People usually considered middle class have also began seeking help, according to charity organizations. <laughs> Moving on, General Secretary of World Sindhi Congress, Lakhu Luhana, has raised concern over Pakistan's negligence toward flood victims in Sindh province. He said millions of Sindhi flood victims have been abandoned by the Pakistan government for the last seven months and are living in precarious conditions. The activist said Pakistan has only cashed on the miseries of Sindhis to get international aid, but it is not interested in rebuilding devastated lives of Sindhi people who are suffering from poverty, diseases, malnutrition and death. Luhana, who was in Geneva for UNHRC session, urged the world body to take cognizance and intervene. 1.8 million people are sitting surrounded by stagnant waters of seven months. Just imagine somebody is sitting in the water which is, has been there for seven months. It is filled with diseases, 
nothing else and people are dying and no numbers are coming out the aid that they received from international uh, community from international organizers that simply even un said that aid is not reaching to the people so the united nations informed its 3300 afghan staff not to come out to work in afghanistan for the next two days after the taliban authorities signaled on tuesday that they would enforce a ban on afghan women working for the world body about 400 afghan women work for the world body UN chief Antonio Guterres condemned the ban enforcement and said if it is not reversed it will undermine ability to deliver life saving aid last december taliban authorities had stopped most female ngo workers from working however the ban did not apply on un operations the un has made its single largest country aid appeal ever asking for 4.6 billion dollars in 2023 to deliver assistance in afghanistan so far, it is less than 5% funded. Aid officials have flagged risks that donor countries will reduce funding due to frustration over such restrictions. The Asian Development Bank's annual flagship on Tuesday forecasts Sri Lanka's economy to contract further in 2023 before it begins a gradual recovery in 2024 as the island nation navigates an unprecedented economic crisis. The ADB report said Sri Lanka's economy contracted by 7.8% in 2022 and is forecast to contract by 3% in 2023 as it continues to grapple with the challenge of debt restructuring and balance of payments difficulties. In contrast, we forecast very slow growth in Pakistan and contraction in Sri Lanka. For Southeast Asia, growth will normalize as weak global demand weighs on exports and display a slight boost for tourism. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's Eastern Bank on Tuesday in its first policy decision since securing a $3 billion IMF bailout kept interest rates steady and expressed optimism that prices would de-accelerate sharply in the coming months. Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe said a favourable base effect would kick in from next month while reductions in fuel prices would help achieve a faster pace of disinflation going ahead. In an effort to conserve the environment by recycling single-use plastic waste, an Indian startup in Pune city is making the best out of waste and is providing employment to women and youth. Take a look. Ekokari, a startup in India's Pune city, has been saving the planet with one upcycled bag at a time as they are using recycled plastic waste, such as wafers and biscuit wrappers, to create handmade bags which are sustainable and eco friendly. The plastic waste is first sanitized, washed, and dried, following which it is segregated based on its thickness and color. The segregated plastic is then cut into long strips which are woven to form a fabric to make handmade upcycled bags, wallets and bottle carriers. So in EcoCari we are working on two basic missions. One is we are trying to conserve the environment by upcycling single-use plastic like biscuit packets, chips packets, gift wrappers, uh, e-com packets and now we have started using uh, audio and video cassettes also. And the second part of the mission is that we are enabling livelihood of women and youth uh, by teaching them how to uh, use your kind handloom for the upcycling process. India uses about 14 million tons of plastic annually. The South Asian nation declared a ban on single-use plastic last year to reduce harmful effects of polythene on the environment. The ban, however, also made it difficult for locals in the daily transactions as they do not have a feasible alternative to plastic carry bags. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.